Jennifer, a pleasure to have you with us. Glad to be here. Of course, Jennifer, the world has been captivated over the last several weeks by the, the UN strike and the associated protests where tens of thousands of people have been on the streets. Perhaps the, the biggest social movement protest since Tiananmen Square. Jennifer, can you give us an update on the, the situation today and the significance of these protests? Okay, so this protest has uh, lasted for around two weeks and uh, uh, because of the, the scale of the strike and the local government's active mediation, uh, many, uh, most of the, the company, Yuan has promised to pay the, uh, to pay the, to pay back the uh, social insurance for workers. So m most of the workers have gone back to work, um, and uh, but the uh, uh, one regret is uh, two labor activists who have been helping the workers. Uh, they were detained, and the one uh, is facing criminal prosecution from the local uh, police. Thanks for the for the update, Jennifer. Could you just give our audience uh, a flavour of the significance of these protests? Because we haven't seen the scale of protests like this, as I said, perhaps since Tiananmen Square. Has this been noticed across China or has the authorities managed to contain the situation? Well, uh, the situation has definitely gone out of the authorities' control in the first uh, two, in the first week when the strike when the strike happened. Um, the significance uh, we can see uh, for the authority for the authority um, the strike definitely made them uh, think what is the best way to um, to. Uh, handle the labor tensions in China. Previously, the authorities did uh, simply try to repress the strikes or, or see the press, uh, see the workers' strike as a, a way to disturb uh, social um, social order rather than simply a, a labor dispute. So, uh, on one hand, the authorities might push for uh, for the union reforms uh, to enable the union to more to effectively to effectively re represent the workers and uh, uh, for from the workers side it further demonstrates uh, demonstrates Chinese workers uh, willingness and uh, uh, readiness to uh, to hold up to hold strikes for uh, to put in in order to defend their rights Jennifer that's a very fascinating insight and you have done an absolutely fantastic article for usilive.org and I would encourage everybody to read it and it's about what you've just said there, the, the task of the authorities in maintaining from their perspective stability and perhaps as a result of these protests the, the spin-off of maintaining stability might be greater labour rights. So we watch with fascination as to whether unions and workers will be giving more support to protest against companies, in particular multinationals, as we have seen by Walmart recently, who at the drop of a hat close factories. Jennifer, what is the, the likely process now for the two individuals who have been at the heart of the UN strike? Does a, a lengthy legal process await them? Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the two individuals involved in this um, uh, labour strike, uh, they were from uh, uh, local labour NGOs. Uh, so one has been released. Uh, uh, who is the director uh, that is trying to help the workers negotiate with the uh, employ employer. And the other one, uh, whose name is Ding Dong, has been uh, criminally prosecuted. And uh, now uh, I noticed there were 50 lawyers who volunteered to defend uh, Ding Dong against the criminal prosecution. Jennifer, thank you very much for that update and what I'm sure everybody will appreciate has been a very significant event 
within the Chinese labour movement over the last several weeks. It only leaves me to thank you once again for your latest update from China. Thank you very much, Jennifer. You're welcome.